do come down. Oh, hey, Instagram. It's me, T. Hunter Patterson. Second thing for the bet. I got my. Let's check it out. So I, somewhere in the middle of the night, if I if I do wake up, you know, I go to bed pretty early. Sometimes I wake up at twelve thirty, two thirty, something like that. It's not to go to bed. I just wake up, and then when I do that, I put a clove under my tongue. I just leave it there to the morning. And right now it's like uh, five thirty, something like that. Sunrise is at five eleven. Oh, the sunrise is coming over there. Say, but don't let like no sunrise here. Pretty thing. Well, a little cloud cover here. There's a little uh, some dew is coming down because you know we got we got got to water the, the well nature's got to water nature's got to do what it's do right and um then, then finally uh then i go back to sleep and then i usually wake up i don't know 4 30 so somewhere around there you know uh, automatically you know i don't set no alarm clock let's put my clove down right here and uh i let that, I let that under my tongue down and down there somewhere before i do my i let that been doing the, the the hot water and the uh cayenne Pepper, I guess it's a good, anyway, but I, I, in a little while I'll do that after I, maybe I'll, do, I'll figure that out. Um, and uh, and so, uh, I said, well, you know, I just like, I just like this time of day. I've always liked this time of day. I, when I was a kid, I would wake up no, no later than six o'clock, you know, so it's just the way it is, right? And, uh, and actually, it's a good time to post. You know why? Because, you know, to me, in my brain, I have my, uh, my uh, uh, American, North American audience. Well, I guess Brazil sometimes chimes in. So I got my American audience right. Then I got my South African audience. It's like like it's five something, but they're not wicked. Well, who cares about the South Africans? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a joke. Relax. <laughs> and then then I have my Indian audience right, which they're like uh, three and a half hours uh, ahead of us. So basically, between the Americans and the Indians, right? I, I, that's that's the core that that we talking to, right? Uh, but it's a little out here. I got I'm out here with my uh, uh, my Lesotho blanket, which I dearly love, and I I, put, I don't wear it. I use it a lot, so I usually just leave it in this in the Lajote house here, you know, because I also live in Kubevu in the village with my wife, but. Um, but you know when I'm here in Dumbaza, and I got a lot, we got a lot of work to do in Dumbaza. Oh, we was out in King yesterday. We finally got. Oh, we needed a graphic card. We looking all over for this. We walked all over King. We looked for this graphic card. Finally, let me tell you a story. Wait. So we looking for this graphic card for the computer because a lot of stuff that I have, I haven't worked in this computer in like I don't know three years or something like that. So we're trying to get it back up so that by the time I get back from India or even before, you know, we get stuff from going. So when I go there, they, 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 we'd be fully functioning. Like in in, in, a, in in less than a year, you know, we're gonna stuff is gonna happen. Anyway, so we're looking all over, and it is one place that I, I know about them. They're like I know about them, but I had a uh, I didn't have a good experience with them a few years back, and so I didn't hate going there. So we walk around. So finally, we, every place we go to, they know they're gonna so try over there. So we had to go back, humble pie. Had to go back there, but I went in there. And the person that gave me the grief, not grief, but uh, that I. It was, it was a woman that worked there. You know, I guess she's the wife or the, something like that of, of the owner. But the owner wasn't there when this thing happened a, year, a few years ago. To make a long story a little bit shorter, so we walked there, and you know, they always South Africa has a strange thing. They hire people, and sometimes the people don't know nothing about nothing. And so we asked, the, so Ms. Lolly asked the uh, uh, guy, you know, we need a graphic card. And the guy says, oh, no, we don't have any graphic cards. Okay. So then he had to look for a, uh, a router because it is something happening in Petty because we're doing this whole thing with this uh, internet state. It's a, it's a thing, right? So we look, and then I had to take a picture of it. And, uh, and as we and, and, and as the conversation goes, the, we slowly, the, the, the owner, the dude, the owner, you know, he talked to himself, well, you know, he's looking for a graphic card. He said, it's up there. So clearly the help <laughs> that the workers don't... And, Look, here's the thing. In the States, if you're working in a uh, in a, uh, uh, a PC shop or whatever these shops, usually the people that work there, they have an interest in that thing. So they know, you know, they're, they're gamers or something like that. They, they know, you know, if you're going to any, they, they know, you know what I mean? But in South Africa, they just hire anybody. I don't know, you know. A lot of these people, just, they just there for the money. They don't care nothing about what's going on, okay? Oh, a little bit of rain's coming down. Anyway, uh, so he said, oh, it's right up there. <laughs> so we got it. It cost a little bit of money. I didn't really want to spend it because I'm always, anyway. 
beginning of the month, I went to doesn't matter. So, so he wanted to show us, uh, like I'll tell you, it's fifteen hundred rand for it. I can't do the conversion with you right now, but it's like fifteen hundred rand for it. Luckily, I had taken some money out, and so we looking and we looked there. So then I, then I, I, I turned to him. I said, and uh, I said, well, it's bloody way they say, yeah, this is the exact one. We need this. Da da da. I said, oh gosh, I don't want to spend no fifteen hundred rand, but what the hell, you gotta do it, right? So, I, so the guys, guys, the, the main guy that you know that owns the shop, he's over there talking to some people. So I talked, because he's the one that said, how much you need 15 million? And we were talking with him with the, with the help from him. So I turned to him and said, okay, let's do the African thing. 1,200 rand. <laughs> and he says, yeah, okay. <laughs> so we buy it. But on the way out, because every place I go, especially here in this area, there's not very, there's, there's no there's no Americans here. Well, people, let's put it, there's no, there's very few, there's nobody that speaks with an American uh, accent or whatever, intonations, whatever, like I do. So people always fascinated when I walk into the shop. Oh, I like your voice. Well, you don't really like my voice. The thing is, that's all you know. You watch the TV and, and you know, or your music and you, you hear American thing and all of a sudden you think that, whatever you think, right? So when I'm walking out, I said, hey, now in, in my best Denzel uh, voice, I want to say, you're the man. No, no. I said, in my best Denzel voice, I want to say, my man, and we walk out like that. So anyway, so it means nothing to you, but I just wanted to tell you that. So I'm wearing, oh, this is my Cape Town t-shirt. I got that, that Cape Town with a stupid slogan. Where the sun never sets. That's stupid. Please. Whoever makes the t anyway, but, but, but I like this t-shirt only because it has Africa there, but it, it still has Madagascar there, which I really, really, really like. But also, uh, this robe, I have a robe here. This robe was actually gifted to me, left with me from our brother Ati. My brother Ati is this older gentleman. Me and Miss Chloe, which we go to, we would help him. You know, we buy for what to help him. He didn't need no help. But we we sit down. There's this. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel and you look up brother Ati, you see it. Man, it was some amazing interviews I did with him. Oh, and we love brother Ati. We love uh, uh, peace and blessings on his his eternal soul. We loved him so much. You know. So me and Mr. Claude, we would always, you know, every time, every time I came to Tabasa, you know, we go over his place and we sit down and talk for a while, give him the best. We, we, I give him healthy food. We make him eat the healthy food, stuff like, like that. He, it was just wonderful, right? So he left this robe for me. I got he gave it to me, something like that. So this is one of my brother Ati robes. Of course, he has a Lesotho blanket that I like. Oh, and this hat, this hat, this is like, it's a Nigerian kind of style. It's made for me by my wife. She's a, she's a tailor, you know. Anyway, so I, I sort of like this one. Ah, some out here, uh, sunrise. Uh, and I'm I, and oh, also when I wake, oh, I, I have to tell you. So usually time when I wake up at 4.30, something like that, or even, uh, even earlier, like 2.30, and I don't go back to sleep, I'm just, my brain is just sort of, I'm just thinking. Da, 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 da. And every once in a while, because so uh, of the cost of the internet here, uh, now rather than stream things, I download and then I, Look at another time. So I had a couple of days ago, or a little while ago, I had uh, did the same thing and listened to the Donald Trump, Joe Rogan thing. You know, because you know Joe talks for three hours, and it's a you, you see, it's it's not this can you know whatever. So and Donald Trump was very entertaining and enlightening because yeah, the Donald you know not too whatever. So then he had, he had tried to get Kamala Harris in there, but she didn't want to she didn't want to do no Rogan right. I don't know why, right? Because Joe is like, Joe, <coughs> he's a conversationalist. Let's put it that way. Uh, so that's what it is. It's like, I know that style because I use that style a lot. I'm a conversation. When I do an interview, I do it conversational, conversationally, right? Uh, and so he wanted Kamala Harris to come. No, they, they declined. No, we don't, no, no, we don't want to have no part of this. Of course, you know, we got to sit down for three hours. They, they want these conditions, you know. No, you can't do it in Austin, Texas. You got to fly where we are, and it's only going to be an hour, not the regular three hours. So Joe said, nah, I'll pass on that. <coughs> and um, so that's what happened. So I downloaded the one that he, oh, I'm sorry. So J.D. Vance went, and so, so he did Joe Rogan. He, uh, Joe Rogan did, um, who's the boy? Oh, um, the 
Mr. 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 I don't really get the I don't gray, I don't old I don't get old like like a lot of these candidates that that you know you know, and this is my real hair, it's just I've styled a certain way that it looks whatever it is, you know. Yeah, that guy, you know. The guy that's running for president on the um, on the Republican ticket, right? Well he has a vice presidential uh, pick, a J D Vance, of course people jump on the people out J D Vance too. So I say, well, you know, you're gonna talk about these people. I want to know more about them from their own thing. And Joe Rogan's a good person to find out because he just has conversations with them. So I'm listening. So 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 I started listening to that. So I'm in the middle of that. I think I got about an hour. It's like a three hours and fifteen minutes. I think I'm at a, at at two eleven or something like that right now. So I'm gonna finish talking to you guys. <laughs> I'm like, shouldn't say guys. You peoples got to be correct, you know, because the woke whatever. And the woke, the woke thing has really been perverted. It's weird because uh, and I don't even deal with the woke, the woke phenomena, you know. Anyway, back to the point. So, uh, so I've been, I've been listening to JD Vance because I don't know nothing about the guy, and uh, it's really interesting, you know. I'm going like, oh, here's the thing. First of all, let me just say right up top. Donald Trump's going to win. Okay, you can forget, you know, you all do what you want. Donald Trump's going to win. I'm not, I'm just trying to tell you. This case, you all, it's a, everybody wants to know. The, give, give me the cliff notes. Just tell me the thing. Uh, we'll do, whatever. Donald Trump's going to win. Just, just know that, right? But here's the thing. So I'm, so I'm getting to know J.D. Vance by listening to what he's his conversation with Joe Rogan. And then I realized certain things. A couple of things. Um, first of all, he has two young, young children, and uh, that's automatic thing in politics because all these other people, Kamala don't have no children, <laughs> you know, I'm not talking about the adopt, you know, he, uh, Kamala don't have no, no biological children that she's, that she's raised or raising, right, so she has a certain mindset, mindset uh, her, I'm not even interested in, her, in the vice presidential candidate that Kamala picked, I, that guy just to me is, I, I don't even want to know nothing about that, boo, boo. like that, uh, uh, Donald Trump is Donald Trump, we all know well, yes, we do know Donald Trump. He's been on our radar for a long time, and so so JD Vance is a new kind of kind of entity. But when you figure out he has these children, and and the, the electorate, I'm gonna say the electorate like that, they do like uh, people that have children. I mean, what's the most one of the most famous things for J JFK, John F. Kennedy, uh, is that you know when John John uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, was uh, they had the presidential desk and this very famous photo where he's he's under the presidential desk because he's like three years old or whatever he's four years whatever how however however old he was so it's a very famous picture so jd vance has this advantage of of having young children and so that's a whole other elect electorate kind of thing that can that can chime into that you know what i mean it's they got this sort of audience whether you like it or not now some i'm some thinking oh this is this is interesting he's going to get a lot of a lot of hits you know a lot i shouldn't say hits because this political atmosphere, you don't want to say hits because you know. Oh, anyway, uh, so so I'm I'm I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, as I move on because I think these thoughts all the time. But then I was thinking, what this whole electoral? Then I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up somehow. This whole electoral thing, what is it? Just something always bothers me about this. Stuff. What's going on? Then it hit me. Okay, we're in football season. Now, I'm a I can't say this, but I, I have to say this way. I'm a Giants fan, like New York. They say they're football Giants now, because they used to be the New York Giants. Even, see, they're based in um, New Jersey now, so they can't say New Jersey Giants. don't sound right, right? And they got to keep the legacy of the New York Giants, but they can't say the New York Giants because they're not in New York, so they have to say the football Giants. Okay, I got you. But so, so I'm a Giants fan. You said, well, how, how, how is that? You know, you don't even watch football anymore. Yes. When I say I'm a Giants fan, what, what happened is that I can't not be a Giants fan, okay? Because it's like a lot of these things, it was my, let me put this, my first official job, you know, when I had the W-2 form, whatever the form, whatever the thing, was I, at 16 years, at 16 years old, I was, uh, I was working, my job, there when you get working papers at 16 in New York, was uh, selling, selling for the, uh, at Yankee, at the old okay, at the old Yankee Stadium, not the new one that's happening. At the old Yankee Stadium, uh, you had the Giants were, were uh, used that stadium in the Bronx uh, 
uh, right there because I was South Bronx. I guess you have to say South Bronx. Uh, they used that stadium as their as their as their that was their home home base because they were they were uh, futzing around. I don't know because it was, there was the old polo grounds that the Giants was in there. Then they were tearing the polo grounds down. Then somehow they had to go to Yankee Stadium. Right? So they so so in the, in, the, in, the, in the foot in the. Uh, what do you call it? The baseball season. It was well, it's Yankee Stadium, the house the roof built, right? And but, but when but back then you didn't have this overlapping where, where uh, you know everybody wants a lot of money, so they extend the season. Where you have there was no big conflict between football season and baseball season as far as the use of the field, right? So, um, so therefore, in the winter time for football season, it was the, the New York Giants, right? And that my first job was selling hot chocolate at the Giants games, right? Uh, and uh, so I, by whatever, I'm just, that's my team. I can't go against, I, I can't go against my team, even though it doesn't really matter, right? So and do thick and thin, you be, that's your team or whatever it is. Well, politics is, for some reason, you know, People I identify, I'm, I've been a Republican all my life. I've been a Democrat all my life. No matter, I, I'll, I'll do or die. I die on this hill, this, this whatever. Uh oh, I got to sneeze. Early morning. It's the early morning sneeze. I always do. It's the early morning sneeze, you know. It's a, I get these false alarms. Um, uh, so, 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 I'm a Giants fan. I can't not be a Giants fan because that's been my formative years, my first job. I sell hot chocolate. So, you know, now I can root for say, say, say the the, the Ravens or something like that. But yeah, you know, it's, I'm just saying that's just the way it is. Well, a lot of these people in politics, even though you you might be that that might be your core, your your fan thing. But when things happen, you know, you got to say, hey, I, I got to leave this this alone. So. So that's what I'm. That, that's the thoughts that came to my head. Like I finished listening to JD Van. But he's fascinating to me. Not fascinating, guy. But he says, "Hey, look, he's, like, he's a veteran like me. He's a young guy that has good, whatever logical ideas. Blah blah. blah. It's a whole thing. This whole thing. So I think that he's he's an asset to the to take away a lot of the people, the uh, so called I don't know left or whatever it is. They say, oh, that JD Van. He's just a, 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 a another Trumper or whatever. Have you know like." Okay, like I can't, I can't talk to these people. Everybody's gonna choose their sides, and they can't get out of their own way. They're gonna choose their sides. Okay, choose your side. That's fine. I don't really have a side. In fact, oh, I right, right, just a good time. I'll end here by by doing my campaign thing, as you may may not know, right? You know, you know uh, uh, U.S. election day is on Tuesday, and uh, and I, I, you know, I'm stuck here. In, I'm stuck. I'm in South Africa, and I was supposed to be in the states and cast my ballot. I wanted to do this whole thing, but can't do it if it's a uh, long thing. Anyway, but uh, but I, since I can't, and it, because of the time, I, was, I can't even do an uh, absentee ballot, whatever it is. Now, I usually vote in Virginia. So I'm, I'm actually campaigning. I have a campaign of my own. And I need you to help me out because I can't, I can't, uh, you know, cast a ballot because, well, I, you know, I, I couldn't, I can't cast a ballot. But, but I am running, at what I want to run as a write-in candidate. Now, if you have chosen your side, you know, your, your red side, your blue side, your green side, whatever it is, then, uh, uh, as I say, bless you, fine. Those people who have a choice, or, or even those people, I'm not even telling the people who want to sit out, I'm not telling you not to sit out. But those, some, some of you people, some of you infinitesimal people, some of you people, if you want to help my campaign, I would like you to write in. And what you're writing in, is uh, somewhere on the ballot, like if you want to do, because in the states you can write in, uh, well, at least where, I, where you can write in. So you can write in someplace on the ballot. I, I, I only have two issues. One the, I'm a, is reparations, right? And two is I just don't want war. Yeah, I'm a veteran and, and J.D. Vance, but I'm not into war, right? At least not current, not, not the way the war does these days with the corporate war. And you, you're doing the bidding of some old corporate, whatever, people that want to make money off of war. So those are my only two issues: reparations for uh, uh, people of, of, of uh, what, we, what they call lineaged <laughs> American Africans, right? And, uh, and and there's no war, right? They say, oh, the, the, there's the party, the Green Party. Okay, fine. If you want to do the Green Party, right there. And I guess if I was there, uh, 
like I say, if I, like I said, vote in Virginia. In Virginia, when they do, they do these separate kind of things. So when they do, Virginia does uh, the the national election, whatever it is. Then they usually do it's president, uh, well, president, vice president, one thing. And then they also have uh, uh, if if if, it is, if they do the Senate and the um, what do you call it, the Congress, if it's happening. I think governor even like that. But that's, they don't have the, all the, all the other initiatives on there, right? So you want to vote down ballot if you can. So I say. Here's how I would vote if I was going to do it. And listening, finally listen to everybody, I would say, okay, my two issues are reparations. Right? And then I have this whole thing that I want the Green Party to have a little bit more uh, swag thing and also also maybe just to throw this into the electoral college thing to expose some other things. So I would vote, <laughs> as I would vote, and I just do this. Here's how I would vote. And I would look into this, what, what I would do. I would vote Green Party, right, for uh, Dr. Stein and... and, uh, and and Butch Ware, Dr. Butch Ware, uh, even though Butch Ware is not really a politician, he, he, he I don't want to get his him right now. So uh, I would vote Green Party, and that would that would, that would include that that would give me that one other thing that would be the reparations and the no war kind of thing. But then I would write in, say on my congressional line, I would write in uh, lineage reparations because I want that in there, the lineage reparations to be a thing because of, uh, as. You may or may not know. Voting is not voting. Voting is actually polling. I won't get into that right now. Maybe tomorrow, or uh, maybe Monday when I get closer to the thing. I'll, I'll get into that. And then someplace else, I would write in "no war," something like that. So, so, so with my ballot, basically, uh, uh, for the president, the, the thing I would have the Green Party, but then someplace else, I would write in uh, uh, lineage reparations, and someplace else, I would write in for another thing. I would write in. Uh, no wars, no more wars, or no war, uh, uh, and so so that's how I w I would vote. I'm not telling you how to vote. I'm just telling you how I would vote. Okay? So just hold the horses. I'm not giving no advice. I'm not a you know. I'm no big D. I'm not no pundit and <laughs> nothing like that. Okay, so let me leave you there. <coughs> and uh, uh, this is this is Saturday, uh, and uh, this is the day that anything that comes to me. Tomorrow is a Sunday, and usually what I'll do is I'll find something to read, and then I'll, I'll riff off with the reading thing. On Monday is a me day, which I will, since that's right before the Tuesday, then I will do some my my, my another pitch for electoral thing and explain to you how what is, uh, how how I'm going to proceed with my candidacy, which doesn't end with this thing. I'll do, I'll be we're gonna be writing in for a while. You know what I mean? It might be at least two electoral cycles. Every time we get to we're going to write in lineage reparations, lineage reparations. And I also want you to do, oh, I'll get you another time, but let me say this. And just to have you practice writing, and then whenever you get to some sort of survey or when you get to a thing when, when they ask you for further comments, you should, I want you, you have to always write in further comments, lineage reparations. Just let you know. Okay? Okay. Talk to you all later. Bye.